Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 3 with me, Braggadon. Let's grab Will so we can go speak to Mizora. To find a way we'll have Halson set this one out. Oak Father preserve you. Wherever you need me. I'll be right here in camp. Take care out there. Go ahead. That's the spirit. Yeah, his approval never went down. So he doesn't hate me. He's just angry, which I understand. His father died in front of him. In fact, he played a part in that. Plus, he never got the closure that he wanted with his father. Defender of the people. Poor little Will. Such a tragedy. Your own father. Cut down in his prime. Damn shame, if you ask me. Mizora, spare me your fake sympathy. You wound me, pup. I admired your father. He was a man of the people. The grandest of dukes. Hard to think he's forever lost to us. Is he? <laughs> Option three is so absurd. Are you saying Raven Guard's not gone for good? I'm saying that someone stepping off stage doesn't have to mean the end of their story. Meet me in your camp. I've got a devil of a proposal. Of course she'd stick her infernal nose where it doesn't belong. Of course she's dreamt up some risible scheme. A devil of a proposal. By the hounds of the hells, what is she planning? Mazora's up to nothing good. That's for certain. Certainly not. But she's as inevitable as Toril's path around the sun. We'll have answers soon enough. Let's talk to Mazora. I can already feel her tightening the leash. This might be my last chance to escape it. Alright, I guess we have the long rest. I was hoping his dialogue would take us right to it, but... Not the case. No tomb sit in Beator. No tomb sit in Beator. Holy hells. Just what are you up to? I come to bargain. The hells demand witness. Enough, Mizora. My father is dead. Say your peace. Sisters. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. 
Infernos contractos te vocamos. Your contract, Will. Signed in blood, forged in fire, bound in bone, but not unbreakable. Then break it already. Will doesn't need to wait six months. No contract is ended without sacrifice. A cost must be paid. Will Ravenguard, a choice is before you. Option one, I raise your father from the dead. And you pledge your soul to me and the Archdevil's Ariel in a pact eternal. Option two, I break your pact and you are freed from your duty. Your father remains dead and Baldur's Gate loses its greatest champion. Name your sacrifice. Bloody Zariel. I won't let her take Will. Silence, Karlak. Mizora, you arsehole. Choose. But I'm Baldur's Gate's greatest champion. What will happen to Will's powers if he breaks the pact? Addendum F. The Absolute must be avenged for the Soulbinder's detention at Moonrise. The Soulbearer retains his gifts until such time as the Absolute is slain. That's a cop-out. I think I'd rather respec him into an Oath of Vengeance Paladin. How is option two the right thing? Yeah, break the pact, Will. You deserve your freedom. You damned wretch. Father. Do it. Break the pact. Fiat Ita. Fiat Ita. Anima ad beator. Didn't think you had it in you. <laughs> Seems my boy's all grown up. <laughs> and don't go fussing about your father. You made your choice. You knew the terms. You know what? I think I'll stick around. Not for the greater good, you understand. Just for the entertainment. Gods, I spent seven years choked by Mazura's leash, and I spent seven years hoping to break free. I never knew freedom could taste so bittersweet. You are your own man now, Will. It's better this way. I have to believe that. I'm not the Hell's puppet in life, nor its warrior in death. The blade will be guiding his own hand. But freedom was paid in my father's blood. Tomorrow I celebrate my gain. Today, I mourn my loss. A moment passes. In the stillness, you find a mote of tranquility. The Raven Guard name now lives solely with me. I will make it count for something. Uh, what's our next step then? We obtain Orin's Netherstone and take back our minds and the city from the brain. I'd like to talk about something else. Go on then. All right, let's respect Will. To make him an Oath of Vengeance Paladin because I think it makes sense narratively at this stage in his story. Because he goes from relying on an external power source to do good to relying on himself. 
He's been inspired by my paladin, of course. Plus, with his personality and general demeanor, I think Oath of Vengeance makes the most sense. Plus, wanting vengeance for his father. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? Animorph. And once I respec him, that means he can use his father's armor too. We kid him out with all of his father's gear. Ah, another. Thy name has been recorded. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. As thou desire. Okay, he's no longer a warlock, but a paladin instead. We've read all this before. Oath of Vengeance. You've set aside even your own purity to right wrongs and deliver justice to those who have committed the most grievous sins. I'll get Inquisitor's Might. You are an ally's weapon attacks, deal an additional two radiant damage, and can daze enemies for one turn. It lasts for two turns. Oath of Vengeance Tenets. Oath of Vengeance Paladins abide by the following tenets. Fight the greater evil. Exerting your wisdom, identify the higher morality in any given instance, and fight for it. No mercy for the wicked. Chasten those who dole out their villainy by wiping their blight from the world forever. Oh cool, it already gave me fairly optimal stats. I get rid of the dexterity here. Do constitution instead. No, charisma instead. And then with our feats, I'll round out the strength and constitution. I've actually had this planned out for a while, if Will's story took him in this direction. Alright, nothing new here. And then fighting style, we'll go with... We got dueling. When you're wielding a melee weapon that is not two-handed or versatile in one hand, and a weapon in the other, you do an additional two damage with that weapon. You can carry a shield in your free hand and still gain this bonus. And that doesn't matter, we can always change that on the fly. I right, so Gips, Abjure Enemy. Frighten an enemy, they have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, and they cannot move. Friends and Undead have disadvantage on the saving throw. On save, target is slowed instead. Valve Enmity, gain advantage on attack rolls against an enemy. Oh, get some pretty good oath spells. A uh, Bane and Hunter's Mark. Alright, nothing we haven't seen before. And here, I'm going to go with Athletics. Or, sorry, Athlete. Another point of his strength. And, of course, the other advantages that Athlete brings with it. I think it's my favorite feat in the game. Alright, so the Oath of Vengeance Paladin gets Hold Person and Misty Step as Oath Spells as well. So far I'm a huge fan of the Oath Spells that this Paladin subclass gets. I've seen Aura of Protection before. Relentless Avenger. If you hit an enemy with an Opportunity Attack, 
Your movement speed increases by 15 feet on your next turn. Could do resilient. Yeah, let's do that. Increase an ability by one to a maximum of twenty and gain proficiency in that ability saving throws. Haste and protection from energy. R of courage. We've seen that before. Fantastic. All right, let's re-equip Will and keep his father's sword. Catherick's shield as well, but here, well, let's go diving into our stash. I'm excited to have a second heavy armor user in my party. I think I'm gonna swap him in instead of Halson for now. also do the splint armor. But instead we'll do the emblazoned plate of the marshal in honor of his father. We can also do the Helldusk set. That wouldn't be out of place. That's right, it's nighttime, so we're not going to see it. I don't remember this ring. We equip it. Oh, it's on his stash and he's over and covered. That's right.
All right, any day now. That might be worth it. I give these to Gale. I don't remember what gauntlets he has equipped or gloves. Uh, the gloves of the automaton are pretty good too. And I'm guessing this doesn't work with a shield. This says nothing in your free hand. I could give this to Jahira and give these to Will instead. Let's go with this. It does give him, give him plus one to attack as well, so. I'm curious, do I have the Helldusk armor laying around? I thought I gave that... No, Lazelle has the Githyanki stuff equipped. Let's see which one I like the look of more. But while I'm here, I want to find... we had the Helldust gloves as well. Unless I... Oh, there they are. Alright. Either way, I'm excited about this. Having a second paladin in the party. Do you like my paladins? And again, I've had this plan for a while. I've been looking forward to swapping over Will's class. If the his story called for it, of course. I wasn't sure. I didn't know this is how it was going to play out. But it kept hinting, oh, you're going to break his contract. Now, I know he gets to keep his powers until the Absolute's been defeated, but... Where's the fun in that? So, we can probably make that work. I mean, that's a pretty cool looking set of paladin gear. Compared to that. I can hold on to it, I guess. Pretty happy about that. I think that's it 
here for now, right? We can go back to the city. Moving in. Oh yeah. Defender of the people. Didn't have that as well as a trophy for defeating Gortash. Can't give up now. He has haste. I don't know if I want to concentrate on elemental weapon. I don't think that I will. Get it because will. Yeah. Wherever we go, we go. Let there be something green. There's a few more buffs I could do. If I wanted to really optimize, I'd probably go back to camp and use like Halson to apply like freedom of movement to everybody. Little things like that. What the hell? Catch a break. Bunch of the buffs that don't require concentration. Oh! We're right here at the lower city. I thought we had to walk all the way down this. Well, all right, we probably made it to Baldur's Gate. Where a series of games called Baldur's Gate it usually takes you a while to get there. And in some cases, you never even see it. Like in Baldur's Gate 2. But I guess calling it Joaquin's Promenade doesn't have the same ring to it. Ah, thank you for the lift, my friend. Thank you very much. Slain! Joy! Freedom. Close. Help me. Help you. Reciprocation! Witnesses eliminated. You walk free. You won! Task. Kill Orin! Kill Orin! Kill Orin! Kill Orin! I helped the devilish ox. Don't like that his dialogue was interrupted. We brought the creature to the city as requested. Seems it left us a note. We got the shapeshifter's boon ring. Grants Shapeshifter's Boon. While shapeshifting or disguising yourself, gain a plus 1d4 bonus to all checks. I'm a talented shapeshifter too. I can shapeshift a thin body into a fat body. All I need is a steady supply of mince pies and mulled wine. Overheard at a tavern in Daggerford. Well, that'd be... Useful in Halson. And a strange apple. A delight from the orchards of Cormir. Crisp, juicy, and ever so slightly tart. A slightly slimy note. Thanks for getting me in. I owe you one. Say so. Can't slow down. For the stout and sturdy. 
Adventurers Wanted, Preparelous and Profitable Quest. Master Lorikon, the Arcanist of Athkatla, the recluse of Raz Ramazith's Tower, seeks brave and enterprising individuals to the uh, delve treacherous temple and recover storied artifact, the Night Song, for preservation in Baldur's Gate. Only sound of heart and keen of mind need apply. Fame, glory, and incredible fortune assured. I'm glad that quest got updated. Interesting. So I'm assuming all of these characters will show up in the final confrontation. So we'll get the Ox, Floric, Arabella, we already have Halson, and Volo. Oh! It's a different objective. Alright, we'll go back and talk to her then. Yeah, and I broke this quest. Alright, let's go talk to the Night Song. And a new camp. Betria, our companions have something to say about Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. You know, I never quite believed I'd actually make it back. It wasn't until we got within reach of Worms Crossing that it felt real. It's so strange. I don't remember much of it, yet I can't help feel like I know it. It feels like home. Better than hitting the place without remembering why. I suppose it is. Though the chance to savor the moment might be brief, given all that still lies ahead of us. I may have to rely on your local knowledge to plug the gaps in my own mind. Hopefully I'll remember more than I expect to. Well, don't lean on me too much. It's been a while since I've been in Baldur's Gate. I'm sure a lot's changed in the past hundred years. Welcome to the Lower City, where Baldur's Gate truly comes alive. Little Will's all grown up. I can't wait to see what trouble he gets into. He forced Will to make an impossible choice. Impossible? My bargain was uncommonly reasonable. A single soul for the return of Baldur's Gate's most beloved duke. A real bargain, I should think. I never thought the legendary Blade of Frontiers would surrender his father for freedom. Not very valorous, if you ask me. But what does a mean old devil like me know about heroes? I don't get it. If Will isn't your warlock, why stick around and give him power? The Absolutists worked a number on me at Moonrise. And you're the best hope I've got at payback. No one crosses the Hell's children without getting scorched. You've left Karlak alone. Didn't you want her dead? What changed? Oh, you are an inquisitive one. I'd have thought you'd figured by now. Zariel found new use for an old battle axe. The dead three in that bulging brain of theirs are a threat to more than this trifling city, you know. Savor her company. Who's to say when Zariel might change her mind? My mistress can be so capricious. What can you tell me about the Hells? The Nine Hells of Beator. Each its own domain, each with its own archdevil to rule it. I call the first Hell my home, Avernus. My mistress Zariel's realm, a torrid battleground split by the bloody waters of the Styx. How I 
adore it. The delicious agony of it all. The other eight, well, they are pleasures unto themselves. Perhaps I'll show you myself, if I deem you worthy. You never told me how the Absolutist captured you. Correct. I didn't. If you must know, I was scouting the cultists on behalf of Zariel. But those cursed shadows were thick enough to fell even a half-fiend. I woke in that damned pod. It kept my body sealed and my most powerful magic silenced. But a brave, kind, benevolent soul set me free. Gallantry isn't dead, after all. I want you out of here. Now. I'm afraid that's not an option. I'm quite stubborn, you see. Take a swing or a stab if you want, but I'll just slip away for a breather. One of the perks of being a half-devil, of course. If you're going to be staying... I need something in return. Why? I'm supplying Will with every scrap of his infernal power. I've paid my dues many times over. I tell you what. When the time comes to squish that big baddie of a brain, I'll lend you a hand. Yeah, but it doesn't say so here. Interesting nonetheless. I received a dispatch from the Grove. Life carries on there in our absence, just as nature intended. My chosen successor, Francesca, has proven to be a wise choice. Perhaps the wisest I ever made as Archdruid. Does he sound different? Don't downplay your achievements. The Shadow Curse would still hold sway if not for you. One grand victory may not be enough to absolve a host of small failures. That is where true leadership lies. Not in winning a single vast battle, but in fighting a thousand smaller ones. Making ten thousand difficult decisions. Finding balance where none seems possible. Day after day, I was... All too eager to surrender my responsibilities towards the Grove. <laughs> Perhaps I was never meant to be Archdruid. To be a leader. You served the Grove well, and found a worthy successor. No one can ask more of you. Still though, I cannot help but wonder if there was more I could have done. Perhaps, Oak Father willing, I may yet have the chance someday. Forgive me. The Shadow Curse occupied me so entirely and for so long, I almost missed the purpose it gave me. Now I must find a new one. I think we got a pretty solid purpose right now. Beating the Absolute and all that. Yes? Have you thought any more about how we might find Minsk? I have. And while I do not love my conclusion, that does nothing to change it. The Harpers are the city's best information network. With them out of action, we shall have to fall back on second best. Thieves Guild. Nine fingers keen. Or the Guild. Sounds like a tavern game. Oh, to be so innocent. <laughs> Nine Finger Skin controls the guild, which in turn controls every criminal racket from Heapside to the High Hall. Nothing happens in this city that she doesn't hear of sooner or later. How hospitable she will be to a harper that comes begging to her guild hall 
Huh, we will find out. Perhaps I will let you do the talking. I am quite charming. I'll speak to the Night Song momentarily. I made it back. <laughs> I'm here. Thank the gods. Thank the gods. time in 200 years I've seen these streets in the sunlight you can forget just how much color there is in the world are you all right hmm? yes of course obviously sorry did you want something the bustle here takes some getting used to <laughs> Crackling fire and a tressum for company is usually more my speed. Still, we must flow with the current we find ourselves in, however tumultuous it may be. If you've need of me, I'm glad to help. An introvert just like me. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new right, Whatever you ally? say, Dusty. That was so scary. Oh my gods. But we're back now, safe, and we can have soup. I made it. Want some? Uh, sure. I have to buy it? I'll let you stay in my camp for free. You make me buy soup. Fine. Slurp happy. That's a phrase. <laughs> All right, stuck to the night song. Uh, Isabel first. Oh, hold on, let's see what's in here. Oh, a dusty book. Glad I looked. This book is all but crumbled to dust. Making it impossible to read. Keeping very well, I hope. I'd like to know what happened between you and your father, Kethrick. I mourn the man I knew. He was wonderful. He raised me. To serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saluna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself. This was different. It was like I could see my fate in her eyes. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. I understand it's strange. There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. 
It was natural. Then... And this is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how, why, but all was black, black, black. Next I knew I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air, I saw shadows. And then my father's face. So changed. So hideously warped. He told me we'd be together now. Said Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak. Could only run. I found last light within the shadows. Made a shelter there. Prayed my father wouldn't find me. By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years. That my father was the source of the horrors that plagued my home. He's gone now. But I suppose the man I knew died when I died. The man he became... That wasn't the father I knew. The one I loved so very much. Now we have heard all that before. But I didn't want to interrupt. Come to bask in the glow of the Moon Maiden's sword? Be most welcome. Okay, so we don't speak to her about it, we speak to Laura Khan about it. Fair enough. Alright, I'm gonna call it here, and next time we begin exploring Baldur's Gate proper. We're just getting started. This is all the way over there. The message from Orin. Is that in camp? Well, let's check that real quick. Is that, there was something, was it a quest update saying that... She might leave a message for us in camp. Okay, real quick. We go back to Rivington, check out the camp there. And see if we can find it. Because that quest marker is off our map. Which tells me it's probably back in our previous camp or in the Rivington area. Or not. All right, well, I won't fret about it right now. Okay, I'm gonna call it here, and next time we'll begin exploring Water's Gate proper. Glad to see that it looks like the Flaming Fists aren't hostile towards us. Alright, for now, thanks for watching. Thanks. For I was about to say thanks for watching twice. I hope to see you guys in the next one.